Hi guys, welcome to episode 175 of Fiber Town. Being attacked. Stay off, please. I'm Emily. This is Alice. My username on Ravelry is Chain of Fools, and Instagram I'm Fiber Town with an R E. How is everyone doing? Ah, <sighs> I'm okay. I am not in my kitchen today, although you might at times see it reflected over there. There's the hot dog and hamburger. But I'm on my couch. Uh, the little Playmobil nativity is coming along. My son's putting it together uh, day by day. And um, not nativity. It's not a nativity scene. Let's have coffee, shall we? So yeah, I'm here doing this, just a brief recording before I have to go to work. It's been a productive day so far. Um, so. Let's talk about my production in the fiber worlds. Yes, the benefit of being on the couch is that I get more Alice. So you might be wondering what I'm wearing. I'm wearing um, a hand spun sweater that I put together, I think last winter or the winter before. Should really check. Um, it's the Party Mix by Julia Farwell Clay and um, it was a knitting pattern. And I actually had to re, take it apart and put it back together. So it originally had these sort of triangular panels, like good days kind of things. Uh, and I took those out because it was massive. Um, and I, you know, it didn't, it even looked silly on me when I was many pounds heavier than I am currently. So I took those panels out and now it fits me really well and I really enjoy wearing it. The sleeves are a Polworth silk um, that I dyed myself and spun up. And then the top is mostly, if you will move aside, the top is mostly Julie Spins, which I adore. And I had to stripe it with some other purple hand spun. So it was about like a combo, a combo knit. So yeah, it's, it's a fun, it's very comfy around the house. Um, the back is Cascade, what is that big skein of Cascade called? Eco Wool. I just had a single skein of it and uh, yeah I used that for the back so it's it came together nicely it's gone through a couple of different lives but it's finally in a happy place and I enjoy wearing it uh, I don't have show notes today so bear with me a little kissy kissy on my coffee cup this coffee is um, one I recently discovered at World Market I was there doing some holiday shopping and it's a Hawaiian coffee and it's flavored toasted coconut. And I'm not a fan of flavored coffees, but that just sounded, that sounded right. It sounded like a good combination. It is good. Okay. Let me show you a couple things before we get down to business. Sit down. You have a smelly face. So stop sticking it in mine. Um, needy dog, very needy dog. So uh, she's one of those dogs, if you pet her and you stop, she's like, oh, do some more. Yes, yes you are. Plus, your tongue needs to stay in your face. Inside, inside. Thank you. All right. So I wanted to say a quick thank you or two to two lovely folks who um, have offered some things for the podcast and for me, which was delightful. So the first one I want to talk about are the Ajax mitts, and that's from Aspen Snapdragon. And um, that's Sierra from Aspen, and she designed the Ajax mitts. Um, just beautiful, um, gorgeous, like fingerless gloves and... You guys should check it out. Um, I really should have a picture. I don't have my iPad. I'm just, as I said, not completely prepared for podcasting today, so bear with me. Um, but those are going to be offered, I think she said two patterns, and I'm going to offer those along to the winner of, um, of the Comfort Cal, which is going on right now. And that person will win some hand spun from me, as well as the Ajax Mitts patterns, which are frankly perfect. For hand spun, go check them out. A J A X mitts, and then the other one is just let me see one or two. I think, yeah, here we go. I'm so excited about these Tinkerer 
she sent me, she's Leslie from Seattle. Hi, Leslie, thank you so much for these. She sent me the pierogi slipper socks from Knitwit Designs, and they were originally knitted with a Ross Farm, I believe a Shetland, and they're shorty socks, but they have a really interesting construction. Hey, I have coffee. Back off. Um, at the top of the heel, this dog. Sit down. Thank you. So thank you guys so much for that. Mm. Coffee. All right, so. <sighs> FOs. I have two. And here's the first. These are my magic socks. My magic wool socks. And let's see, which one is, this is the first one. So Handspun Wensleydale. Isn't that just a gorgeous color? Um, from my, these are both wools from my class with Deb Robeson two years ago at Shenandoah. Well, a year and a half, maybe. I love them. I love them. North Ronaldsy. I talked about this wool before. And that is only from North Ronaldsy and the Orkneys. It doesn't exist elsewhere. And then the Wensleydale from Colorado, um, which was gorgeous. And then this was all, I spun the North Ronaldsy half woolen um, and half worsted prep. This was the all worsted prep. And then the second sock, which is needing some ends woven in, um, is all the worsted prep in the leg. And then I had to alternate in the foot between the worsted, <laughs> excuse me, between the worsted and woolen. So you definitely see a difference there. Um, and I hope these are not too small. They were before blocking and I actually haven't tried them on. So I need to do that. And I may need to add a little more toe length. We shall see. Very happy with these. Pair number 13 of the year. The second FO, still damp. I'm going to put them on anyway. These are my Drumlin Farms mitts that I designed. Soulful Stash. Um, this was from my good friend Heather with all the numbers after her name. Drumlin Farm Yarns from Massachusetts. It's a single, a Romney single, which was incredibly strong for a single, like hard to break even when I had to snap off the ends when I was done with the knitting. So really great. Now the second one I finished the other night as I was watching Elf with my son. And yeah, obviously did not pay attention. Didn't write down anything about how I had done these. So this one, my fingers go up to the top. This one, there's a lot, there's too much room. So I did the decreases differently. Yeah, I should have started the decreases. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, this has to get ripped out once it's dry and I will have to pay better attention to how I did that. I think I even, I did the thumb quite differently as well. They will be wonderful mitts, but definitely look when I take them off the height difference that's not gonna work so yeah it's it's a bummer to finish something and then have to rip out and redo at least it's just at the top and it's decreases mm. so a uh, works in progress I have stop my lovage sweater I'll talk about later that really has not seen any action but I do have in my kitchen counter crafter bag a hoe and an almost faux so there's my first mitt for my friend and this is the left hand one no right hand one love it so lollipop rainbow connection beefcake base hazel knits artisan sock in some beautiful gray and Great. They're really great. I'm kind of jealous. Um, this is the second one. I was under the weather uh, yesterday and a little bit the day before and I just knit the whole thing as I watched anything with Stephen Fry on it in it on Netflix. I really love him. Um, mostly like nature documentaries and like travel stuff. So taking close notes on these so that I can duplicate the second one. And I'm just sort of, you know, those are just my own 
all three of those were just my own patterns. And I, I'm also working on a mitten pattern that I'm not going to show you, but I did knit the cuff of one of those. Um, and it's a long cuff. And then I decided to pick up this blanket. Oh, did I bring my... Yes, okay. Um, my mitered square blanket, which has not gotten a lot of action lately, but let me show you what I've done. I've done nine squares. One, two, three, and this is Knit Style Yarns from Sharon, and that's Fallen Fairy. She gave that to me at Rhinebeck. This is a hand spun. I just put this in today. This is my Sokusu from the socks I recently knitted. Hand spun from Sarah Pomegranate. <laughs> that's special stuff. This is a lollipop from the, the gauntlets I just showed, and I did have to do a little yarn management here or there, so this was just a nugget I had to pull out, and I put it right in my blanket. Don't know what this is. And then this. I think this might be three Irish girls from a mini. So nine new squares. And this, it's cold, so it's lovely to have this on my lap as I knit on it. So I'm hoping to get 24 squares, basically. Um, this month. The other thing that I worked on is another hand spun sweater and another pattern I've pretty much made up uh, and I steaked it. So this was the flax um, pattern, the numbers from that pattern, but it's vastly different. And I did a steak really because I didn't want to purl. Um, felt like I want, you know, cardigans that you have to purl back. Ugh, no. If I don't have to do that, I, I don't want to. So I decided to put in some steak stitches and I steaked it. So let me show you. Um, so this is hand spun from yogurt. He was a, um, a cross of three different breeds that I bought as a fleece at Maryland a few years ago. So the back of this is lace and the front, I did a crochet a crochet steak. Did I miss a stitch? I think I missed a stitch. Sorry, I'm just looking at it. It's okay. This is, yarn isn't going anywhere, but I reinforced it with some crochet uh, and then I cut right up that stitch. There's the other side. And I used some purple lace from Dragonfly Fibers and I have a, a lace shawl out of this gorgeousness. I need to wear more often. Um, so you can see that there's a sleeve on the needles. And I've taken what yarn I have left and I am just going to knit till I have half on one sleeve, alternating the two little skeins that I have. And then I will knit the sleeve on the other side. So I'm weighing this as I go. Um, and then for the steak part, I actually kind of like it just like this. But I might tack it down and uh, put some grain ribbon sew some grow grain ribbon so it's a tidier edge. So this will be a lovely sort of all-purpose gray cardi. It's a little cropped for me. It's top of my hips so it's not it's not like midriff but shorter than I usually wear and it's in my hand spun, hand woven, hand sewn project bag. And I made another one of these this week that I sent to a friend so I don't have that to show but that was also an FO. And speaking of sewing, I have this lovely project to show off. It's not complete, and I've been taking my time with it. Typically when I sew, I get this kind of frenzy, and I just want to bang it out. And I just realized there's a bottle of cooking oil on my desk. How clever. Long story. All right. So this is the Anna dress out of some wool. So what can I say about this dress? Lots of things. It has a lining. I showed you that last week. Um, usually I would let a lot of things slide in sewing, but with this dress it didn't feel right to cut corners and let mistakes stay. So I've basically made two dresses. See, there's the inside with the same darts as the outside. And, um, you know, I, de I did add, I've never made an Anna with long sleeves, and they are kimono sleeves, so they are contiguous. Um, 
So I do have a little extra fabric, I feel like. When, when I just stand like this, it looks great. <laughs> when I move, the fabric, it's, it's, it's fine, but it's just I'm having to get used to the way it looks. And speaking of moving, um, the, the lining, which is Bember Grayon, which was so much easier to sew than the other stuff that I've used for linings in the past. Um, I feel like the sleeves are a bit tight, even though I ripped them out and I sewed them again with a much smaller seam allowance. They're still kind of, I can feel stuff kind of moving with me and, you know, and then I can feel it stop moving. Maybe that will change when I hem the cuffs, but I don't know. It's, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a process I'm learning. So I do have to hem the cuffs and, you know, my pattern cutting is not up to snuff. Things don't line up. In fact, it was hard, you know, obviously harder to cut the rayon. So, um, than the woven, the woven just stays put as you cut. So it's going to be interesting. I think you do a blind slip stitch. You sew them both down together like this, and then you do a blind slip stitch, which I've never done. Um, and then I have the hem at the bottom to do. Now I put in an invisible zipper and I have an invisible zipper foot and I have used it with the other invisible zippers that I have put in. This is the very first invisible zipper that hasn't snagged that I can actually zip up, but I didn't do it with the invisible zipper foot because when I've used that in the past, I've just gotten those snags. I've gotten stitches too close to the zipper even with my foot. So I sewed farther out on the zipper tape and it's not invisible. And that's okay. You know what? That is all right. Um, although down here, it doesn't look really great when it's on my behind. So I think I need to possibly hand sew the bottom of it because it does pucker. Um, so the Anna dress, the panels, of the skirt need to match certain places uh, for, of bodice seams. So I have matched everything perfectly. And what I realized I did when I first cut out these pattern pieces that I had forgotten about is that I had to cut out a larger skirt than a top. And now things match up a bit more. Um, as I said, I've lost um, over 30 pounds at this point. So I was sewing this and had like eight inches extra on the skirt and the eight inches difference from the bodice to the skirt. So I still needed a little extra. And in, in the past when I've knit this dress or when I've sewn this dress, I have done small pleats to deal with that, um, that extra fabric. Small pleats were not going to cut it with this. It's just, it was too bulky. It doesn't have that streamlined look that I love about this pattern. So I had to undo actually I had to rip out all the seams, I mean, in the skirt panels and re-sew them with a much wider seam allowance. I had to do a lot of math. I mean, in a couple of them to get those seams to line up, I have this much um, seam allowance. So I have to cut that off. But, you know, the back darts have to match up with the a, a panel seam here. And now I did cut um, this, this panel, a side panel, and the one on the other side against the grain because I didn't have enough fabric. And I feel like, I mean, pattern wise, it's okay. Pattern matching, you know, that's a very tiny check. Um, that wasn't the issue. I was worried about drape, but it seems okay. Um, truly, it seems fine. So a few things to tweak on it and a few things to still complete on it, but now I just need a place to wear it. So that is all that has been sewn on this week. There has been, ugh, I finished a, a batlet, a hobbledehoy batlet on a spindle, but that's it for spinning. Um, so, what else can I tell you about? Well, acquisitions, let's do that. The amazing Sarah Pomegranate sent me one of her shrooms, her hand spun cork shrooms. Isn't that adorable? And I bought my Christmas tree this morning so uh, this will get a place of honor and I adore it. 
just brings back this memory of when my daughter was little. I went, <laughs> whenever we had a bottle of wine, um, my husband would draw a face on the cork and call it Cork Man, and she would play with it. So this reminds me of a cork man. In fact, I'm tempted to draw a face on it. So that's a lovely treasured thing from a treasured friend. Speaking of treasured friends, um, Ross Farm, Amy and Scooter Pie sent me prizes for Fleece Wise. Extremely rare Hog Island. If you haven't entered in the Fleece Wise, put your projects up there. What are you processing? What are you washing? What are you spinning? What are you knitting that has started as raw wool? It doesn't even have to be raw wool. Um, hand spun. Breed specific would be great, but we want to know. So that is going to be a prize the next time I draw. I don't know when that will be. And then, you guys, we have this. This is one of her breed experiments. This is raw wool. So this is very sheepy smelling. And you know what? I'm thrilled to have this in my house because I'm sad when I don't have raw fleece in my house. So this is a Shetland and Lester Longwool Cross. What? Now I have the details. She told me which parent was which, but I think this is a pound of raw wool. So you would you would get at least eight eight ounces out of this finished um, spun. So you could do an amazing shawl. Pretty cool. So that will be another fleece wise prize. And then I got some more Wensleydale. Oh, spoiler. This is the last the last Highland Handmaids Club and it's Wensleydale and it's the Hello colorway and thoroughly enjoyed this club. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Isn't that gorgeous? So another lovely long wool to spin up. Now I got two of these patterns from Brooklyn Tweed. They sent, uh, sent with some yarn that I purchased um, that I don't have right here to show you. It's going in the design. Mm -hmm. So I have the talon, sh the ta I wanted to call it tal talon throw, but it's talon tro. And then spire. Ooh, that's very pretty. I think I'm going to keep this one. Love that. But this one is going to be offered up at some point as part of a prize. Uh, and the last acquisition I have is this. And this is going to probably go in my Lovage sweater. And my Lovage sweater may get partially ripped out. I'm not happy with the color work, the way it's looking. And I'm not happy with the green, one of the dark green that I have in there. And I think it should be this. Harrisville 2 Ply Shetland Spruce colorway. And it's okay. It's better. It's better that I rip it out rather than wear a sweater. And of course, I will try blocking it before I rip it. But rather than wear a sweater I'm not completely happy with, that's color work on f fingering weight yarn, size, whatever needles, too small. It's, it will be worth it to do that. So, is there anything else I need to tell the people, Alice? She's right here, just has decided to stop attacking me. I feel like there's other stuff. Come here, sleepy boo. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Some people really like to see you. Did you know that? Did you know that? Hey, maybe we should take a walk before work. It's a little bit cold for Alice, right? Would you still like to go walkies? You can put your coat on. I know you have your Noro coat. So, I feel like there's other stuff to tell you. However, a bit scattered today with my bottle of cooking oil and the Advent Playmobil and this dog. This dog. This dog. She's meme worthy. Yes, you are. Are you meme worthy? Did you get some dinner? All right. I'm just going to talk to my dog and like have the camera running. I can't have you guys do that. So everyone take care till next time. Bye-bye.